Hello everyone. So we have come up with another case in our learning case by senior resident series. This case was presented by Dr. Pujita in intra departmental discussions. So a 42 year old male presented in our department with complaints of pain and swelling in the right heel since four months. And on physical examination, there was a tender swelling at the Achilles tendon insertion site on the right of the right foot. The case was referred from Department of Orthopedics and we did the lateral radiograph of the right ankle in which we, we could see that the interface between the anterior margin of the Achilles tendon and the pre-Achilles tendon fat is little bit blurred near its insertion site. Then we can see that there is more bursal prominence or there is an increased bursal prominence over the uh, posterior aspect of the calcaneum. You can say that there is a prominent bursal tubercle. At the insertion site of the Achilles tendon, we can find there are degenerative changes happening as well as there is secondary ossification happening within 2 cm of the Achilles tendon, which is the most common site. There is associated soft tissue swelling over the posterior aspect of the calcaneum. So coming to a little bit of more explanation of the tubercles which we can evaluate on the lateral uh, calcaneal radiograph. Superior most lies the talus tubercle and it helps in the talocalcaneal joint articulation. Then there is a bursal prominence or the bursal tubercle which was quite prominent in our case. There is posterior tubercle as seen here. Then over the inferior aspect of the calcaneum we, we have the medial tubercle and the anterior tubercle. So in the medial tubercle we can find that there is spurring sometimes happens and in the zoomed up image of our case we can find that there is bursal prominence, there are some inflammatory changes happening over the uh, superior aspect as well as the retrocalcaneal recess which is a very clean fat filled space over the, over the insertion side of the calcaneum or anterior to that is also lost in our case. So these findings were then communicated to the concerned department and on ultrasonography all our findings were confirmed. There were uh, inflammation of the fat posterior as well as anterior to the calcaneum, there was secondary ossification, there are degenerative changes happening and there was bursal tubercle prominence. On the axial view also there was inflammation in the fat anterior and posterior to the paratenon. So these findings of fusiform enlargement of the distal tendoachilles tendon and inhomogeneity at its insertion site, thickening, calcifications, subcutaneous edema and the posterior surface of the calcaneum uh, appearing more prominent were communicated to the concerned department. With keeping the primary diagnosis of Haglund's deformity with associated degenerative changes, the other differentials could be isolated calcific tendinitis of Achilles tendons which was less likely in our case or the systemic inflammatory articular disorders such as Reiter syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis. However, these inflammatory arthritic diseases are more diffuse and are associated with cortical erosion of the bursal border of the calcaneum. Salient features of the diagnosis from the literature view. The Haglund syndrome was first described by Patrick Hag Haglund, Haglund in 1927, characterized clinically by painful soft tissue swelling, the so-called pump bump at the level of the Achilles tendon insertion, and the patients could range from young adult to elderly and it is common and the condition can be seen in either gender. In our case, it was a male 42 years. Hind foot varus and pest cavus are the predisposing factors. Plain radiograph in a lateral standing position is useful to assess the presence of prominent bursal projection of the calcaneum and on ultrasound, the Achilles tendon is swollen with dystrophic calcifications can be seen as in our case. Superficial bursitis usually manifests as soft tissue swelling with, which gives rise to the convexity of the soft tissue posterior to the Achilles tendon and it is also one of the characteristics feature of Haglund syndrome and uh, MRI may be required for ambiguous or clinically equivocal cases. As we all know that it with its superior soft tissue and bone marrow signal contrast, MRI is more sensitive for making the diagnosis and assessing the severity of the disease. So these are the references of our case. It was a quick learning case uh, we got recently. And thank you and as my residents say, stay tuned.